Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and my Good Performer Beginner's Guide. In these three short videos, I'm going to show you all the essentials you're going to need to start creating your live rig inside Geek Performer. We're going to cover things like choosing the correct hardware, setting up your audio interface, your MIDI gear, and all your VSTs so that we're ready to go. I'm going to show you how to connect up any combination of your favorite VST instruments and effects to create any type of setup that you want. And in the third video, I'm going to show you how to set up on the fly controls for all your setups. Sound exciting? Mm -hmm. So get yourself comfy, grab a cup of tea, maybe a biscuit, and we'll get going. In this first video, we're going to talk about some hardware choices and do some initial setups inside Gig Performer. Let's do it. So yeah, hardware. Gig Performer will run happily on Windows and Mac, but if you are serious about taking this out on the road, I strongly suggest you have a separate laptop for, for your gigging needs versus your home requirements. For one, you're gonna be able to optimize it a lot better, strip out all the kind of gunk that you don't need for kind of day-to-day -day home and office use. You can streamline it right down to the bare bones so that you've got all your resources handy, as much memory as possible, and all your kind of notifications can be always turned off and all that kind of stuff, because trust me, it is a complete pain in the butt cheeks to continually turn on and off features on a weekly basis or how often you gig uh, uh, for things you might need uh, on stage versus things you're gonna need at home. And if you're not diligent, like I'm not, there will come a time where you forget to turn off certain things and right before a solo, in front of a big crowd, you get, you've got mail. So yeah, uh, use a separate machine if at all possible. Now, spec of your machine when it comes to your Mac or your Windows setup, memory is going to be the main bugaboo. You want as much memory as you can get. I'm going to say 8 gig minimum, uh, 16 onwards, 32 onwards would be ideal. Processor wise, anything kind of mid range upwards from the last 10 years, you're going to probably be okay. Depends on the plugins you use, however, because like I say, Gig Form itself isn't very uh, resource hungry at all but it's the plugins that you use that are going to take up all the resources. So think about the plugins that you're going to use. Uh, it all depends on your particular situation uh, and work from there. Now, I would say both your Windows machine and your Mac machine, you should optimize as much as you can. But with Windows, you can now really have to. Poor Windows has to deal with tons of different hardware configurations, loads of different drivers, bloatware, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so uh, take some time and do some extra optimization inside Windows. Uh, I'm gonna leave a couple of links down below uh, that will show you how to do this. It's a great ebook on the Gigformer website that takes you step by step through how to do stuff. And I've also actually shot a video for them on the YouTube channel, which gives you a more visual uh, way of doing things. So yeah, uh, do that in your own time, but please do it because it will pay dividends later on. So when it comes to um, Windows in particular, you can't use the basic native audio drivers that come inside Windows. They will not cut it. End of story. You've got to use what's called an ASIO driver. Now, don't worry about it too much because most of the audio interfaces that are available these days come with their own specifically written ASIO driver. It's like a specially written audio driver with super low latency, uh, super quick, so it's very snappy to play with and all that kind of stuff. We're going to talk about uh, audio interfaces in just a second, however. Mac, uh, you guys have got it a little bit easier, of course, because Mac only uses one type of driver. It's called the core audio driver. And because Mac, uh, Apple, has a lockdown on all the kind of hardware that they put inside the machines, they can really nail the drivers for it and get it really uh, super stable, super quick and all that stuff. So Mac people have it a little bit easier in terms of setting these types of things up. Not that you can't make a fantastic Windows machine for this, you can. I've used one for many years. Uh, just Mac has just the edge on the, the driver front, I think. I go down below. Now, audio interfaces, very quickly. Get a, a good quality named brand one. Focusrite, Personas, RME if you can afford it, Motu. There's loads of different ones to choose from. Personally, for me, try and avoid the really bottom end kind of budget ones. A lot of them sometimes don't come with that specially written 
ASIO driver and you have to use a, a generic one like ASIO for all and what things and yeah, you might get it to work, but I, I wouldn't recommend it. Get a, a good name brand one. Uh, and when it comes to the actual size of the interface, get one with more inputs and outputs than you might think you'll need initially. Because when you do start using Gigforma and start to see its kind of flexibility, especially when it comes to audio routing and all these types of things, those extra ins and outs will become really, really handy. Try and get an audio interface that has some extra MIDI in and out ports too, because they will come in super handy. Now some other hardware that you're probably going to need, a MIDI controller of some description. If you're a keyboard player, you're probably going, mm -hmm. but if you're like a guitarist, brand new to this or a singer, um, you will need some sort of kind of uh, control device to play around with all the controls that you can set up, like all off switches and sliders and knobs and things. So there's tons to choose from. Get one that suits your own needs. Uh, keyboard players are used to this already. We've got tons of options, but uh, there's foot controllers for guitarists. There's little MIDI mixer things or little small devices for bolting onto a, like a mic stand, things like that. Uh, just get one that uh, suits yourself. So to summarize, Mac or Windows laptop, ideally with 16 gigabytes onwards, a good quality audio interface with as many inputs and outputs as you can afford that also comes with its own specifically written SEO driver for you Windows guys, and some sort of MIDI controller, MIDI keyboards, foot pedals, mixers, all that type of stuff. Now we're going to go and delve into Gigformer and do some initial setup. Right then. I've got the headphones on and let's get going. I've got a brand new empty session of gig format up on screen here. We're going to set up your audio interface. Uh, we're going to make sure that any of your MIDI equipment that's connected is actually talking to gig format. And we're also going to make sure that uh, any of your plugins that uh, you've installed uh, are all there ready available to start creating. So let's do our audio interface first. That's the most important part. There's uh, various ways of getting to the kind of global options inside Gigforma. The easiest way is to use your mouse and go to options and click general. And you can see up at the top here, we've got loads of different setup uh, pages that we can uh, set up inside Gigforma. These are all the kind of global setup options. Now, we can head from the general tab like that and go to audio in and out, and we can set up our audio interface from there. Or if you want to do it quickly, you can go options and go straight to audio setup. That'll take you straight there. Uh, and if you don't want to use a mouse, you can actually use control comma. Have a job doing this with my glasses on, I'm getting old. Now the audio in and out section will be slightly different between Windows and Mac, and I'll show you both. In, this is the Windows machine that I'm currently using here. This is my studio rig, uh, and I'm using a Focusrite uh, interface here. And as you can see, I've chosen my ASIO driver, and that's what you want to do. Don't be using Windows Audio, Direct Sound, or any other type of driver that might be listed in there. Just use ASIO, trust me. Uh, down below that, we've got channel selection. This is where you can turn on and off your inputs and outputs uh, in case you don't want to use them inside uh, creating your rig. So you can turn inputs and outputs off in here. I generally tend to just leave them all on. Is my personal preference. Now the audio property section is the most important part when it comes to setting up our interface. This is where we set our sample rate and our buffer size. I'm not going to go into depth about how these things affect your system uh, because this is just a kind of basic let's get going kind of thing. In a live situation a sample rate of anything over 48,000 uh, I don't think it's required for, for, for live use. You're not going to hear that extra fidelity. Sample rates are like 96,000, etc. I, I think that's more suited to recording and things. Live situation, you know, I, I tend to use 44.1. It's more than enough for live use. Now, audio buffer size, this is going to depend on the type of plugins that you're going to use and the power of your computer. Ballpark-wise, with most modern computers and the kind of current uh, plugins of nowadays a good place to start is around about 128 samples uh, it's quick enough where you're not going to conceive any real latency and it's not going to tax the computer 
too much unless you've got a really kind of super old one or a really kind of low spec machine 128 samples is a good place to start in my view anything over 256 uh, samples and you start to hear a little bit of latency where if you play a note it's a, mill a few milliseconds later when you actually hear the sound or when you strum a string on a guitar it's a milliseconds later when you're actually hearing the affected sound and that can be really off-putting when it comes to playing live you want things really snappy and quick so now if your computer's struggling with a buffer size over 256 which kind of is rare these days uh i think you're gonna have to kind of consider upgrading your machine like i say i would start at 128 uh, and work your way down the way if you can if you've got one of these fancy new apple macs with the uh, m series processors like your m1s up to m4s i think maybe m5s coming soon i don't know what they do inside those things but it's some sort of mystical magic uh, i've had mine down to uh, 96 and even 64 samples it's crazy so now i could have just said really start 128 and um, we'll move on now, obviously, Mac Apple architecture is quite a bit different to Windows. Uh, and when it comes to setting up your audio inputs and outputs and properties inside Gig Performer, uh, this box looks a little bit different. So on my MacBook Pro here, you can see that the window is slightly different. Mac only uses one type of audio driver, their core audio driver. Uh, so you don't have the option to choose any other types of driver. You just choose your device that you're going to use. However, we do have a little bit more flexibility when it comes to Mac. You can actually choose different devices for your ins and different devices for your outs if you want to. For instance, here I've got my little Personas interface covering all my inputs, but in the audio out section, I've actually choose my MacBook Pro speakers. Choose. But obviously you can choose whatever types of devices you've got connected. Choose, choose. The audio properties section is exactly the same and I'm gonna still stick to my guns and say anything over 48,000 Hertz isn't really required for uh, live use. Next thing we should do is uh, make sure that any connected MIDI gear is actually communicating properly with Kick performer. Now the easiest way and the quickest way to make sure we've got some sort of signal flow is to simply play a note or move a knob. That's a slider or a knob, whatever. And in the top right hand of the screen, you'll see where it says MIDI, a little green box flashing away. This indicates that we're getting data. The top uh, green light indicates MIDI in and the bottom green light indicates MIDI out data. So that's a quick way of knowing uh, that we've got some flow going through. Uh, a more in-depth way of looking at all the kind of MIDI data that's coming into Gig Performer uh, is by the global MIDI monitor. Now, hit Window and choose Global MIDI Monitor. Or if you want to use the keyboard shortcut, Control M. Do this without my glasses down the way. Again, can't see. There we go. Global MIDI monitor has come up. Uh, let's let's uh, make that window a little bit bigger. And as I play a note or move a controller, you'll see that all the individual MIDI data is being shown in that window. If I move a slider, you'll see control change data. Uh, turn a knob, different control change data. Pitch bend all these types of things. So very, very handy for a uh, really in-depth MIDI analysis, uh, great for troubleshooting and setting up like program change numbers and all these types of things. One more thing we should do when it comes to MIDI is make sure that all our uh, connected MIDI equipment is actually showing up as a device. Let's head back to the options. I, I, I'm one for using a mouse. So if you want to use the keyboard shortcuts, you can. I think it was control comma. Yes, I remembered. So let's make sure we've got all our MIDI equipment connected up. Head to MIDI ports just there, and you'll see a list of all your connected MIDI equipment. Now, if you've got some MIDI equipment connected and it's not showing up in here, back out of Gig Performer and double check that you've got all your drivers and software uh, installed for the, for the given devices that you have connected, just in case there's like special MIDI drivers or whatever that that particular piece of hardware needs. Right, you following me so far? Great. We've got our audio interface set up. We've got some MIDI connections uh, working properly. All we need to do now is make sure that all of our VSTs 
are available inside Gigformer. So I'm going to use my mouse again and head up to Window and choose the Plugin Manager. The keyboard shortcut is Control Shift P. This brings up the Plugin Manager window. And here you'll see a list of all your installed plugins. Now, uh, when Gigformer sets itself up, it'll do a scan of all the default places where manufacturers will put plugins in. However, if you've installed plugins in your own folders and you're very super kind of organized, you can point Gig Performer to those folders by hitting manage and choose these two options here. Set VST folders for scanning and set VST3 folders for scanning. Now you can see I've already added a couple of my own uh, folder locations. You just click add and point Gig Performer to your own folders. Once you've done that, all you need to do is press scan and choose scan for new and updated plugins. That will force Gig Performer to do a, another scan of the whole system and all of your available plugins should show up. So we've got our audio interface set up, we've got our MIDI gig connected and we've got all our plugins ready to go. So we are good to go in the next video. We're going to actually start creating some stuff uh, and create our own rig. Uh, I'll see you over there.